Okay, this video is to show some of the things that I'll take on a climb. Sometimes I'll take more, other times I'll take less, but this is sort of the basic alpine gear. I did a three-day trip and cut it short by a day. It's, uh, there's a little extra water in it, a little less food than normal, but we'll take a look and see what's inside. It's a 40-liter pack, and 35, 40 liters, usually I can go three, to, uh, three days or four days, and uh, have climbing gear, uh, rock, rack, runner, and so on, all contained in 40 liters. On the outside there are gaiters. Uh, a lot of times uh, I will just typically wear them. These are brand new gaiters and I have them on the outside and I didn't use them. Let's open it up, take a look. So, the first thing to notice are a couple carabiners. They come in handy, especially for getting uh, through rock sections. I have a pack of food. I can fill this up. It'll last me about three days, perhaps four. It's about a pound and a half of food per person per day. Uh, next I have a day sack. This is for peak bagging. This is a Flash 18. And inside I have a rope and a harness, plus a couple slings to repel. It's important to have rope. Bring rope with you because if you climb up something, you may not be able to get down. Okay, let's see what's next. Uh, bottle of water. This system also can support the hydration system and I haven't used it this time. Uh, I have an extra layer. Uh, the other day I was out in sub-freezing temperatures below, below freezing and everything in here just we did I did fine. Next is a, uh, a sleep not a sleeping bag but this is a uh, down jacket. Uh, air mattress that has both insulation and comfort. Next is a one pound bivy sack. One and a half liters uh, platypus to carry extra water. You do have to camel up now and then. And near the bottom I have six and a half liter of a uh, two pound sleeping bag. This will go sub-freezing. That's the basic guts to the inside. We'll look at the top compartment next. Okay, let's look at the top compartment. An egg. Great place to not break things. Uh, glasses. These are part of the 10 essentials. Uh, headlamp, very important, especially when the days are short. Some other essentials such as knife, uh, sun lotion, lip balm, glasses, a whistle. Whistle can be very handy for being rescued. Uh, some of my food, it's not all contained in the, the earlier uh, blue container, but I have some right at the top to grab a hold of quickly. Uh, luxury, something to toothbrush, I've got a lighter and a razor blade. And this is actually a very important uh, device. Toilet paper, more food. This device is uh, my, my shell. The shell, this thing, I don't recall how much it weighs. It's a runner shell and perhaps it's three ounces. And it is absolutely critical to staying warm. You wanna be able to quickly protect yourself especially when you come to a stop to not get cold beyond recovery. So the wind shell is very important. Uh, your upper body is much more important to insulate than your lower body. You do need to have hat and gloves and other uh, things. The hat and glove I don't have here because they were included with me as I was walking out. The uh, boots I was wearing were the full mountaineering boots, not something that's something flexible but something that has very rigid edges. Uh, the rigid edges are great. They're superior for mud, dirt, rock, just absolutely everything. If you want to get a good bite, use the full mountaineering boots that have the stiff shank. So that's about it. Uh, we can take a look more detail of these different items, but this is about what I pack and uh, the important stuff is all here. You don't see extras, you don't see uh, a stove. I'm not cleaning, I'm not cooking, uh, I'm going light. 
I basically want to be able to have something warm to sleep in, spend the night to be sheltered, and I need some clothes to keep me warm and some food to get going and some of the tools to get off the mountain. Okay, we can take a minute to talk about some of the things missing or some of the things that we may want to add. Uh, you didn't see a first aid kit with gauze. Uh, gauze is a very helpful, useful thing. These are some of the things I carried with me on the way out. I've got my poles, I've got a, pair, a hat and a pair of gloves, and then I've got the full mountaineering boots. Looking a little more detail, uh, I have a couple feathered friend products. This jacket is very warm. It's not uh, a tiny amount of loft. It's not a lot either, but it's absolutely amazing how warm it can keep you. And again, uh, the lightweight two pound feathered friend type bag. This one's still wet, so it's not, uh, the loft is not 100% yet. I just opened it up. It's a little bit wet. What else is missing? Map and compass, you don't see that. And uh, GPS, I have my GPS on my wrist. The uh, map and compass is something that uh, is pretty much essential. I'm fairly expert at navigating and not everybody is that great at getting around. So one thing that happens a lot is people tend to get lost in snow. Uh, their prints melt or a storm comes, they get disoriented. So it's very important to kind of know where you are, where you're going and so on. Um, so again, the map and the compass, uh, I didn't show them to you. Uh, the place I went, it wasn't required because I've been there so many times. Um, I did carry a GPS with me. So ba that's the basics. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave a comment below and uh, be happy to address them. Uh, the thing is, when you go light, you do want to go light. This is, like I said, the 40 liter version uh, of a pack, and this guy's not the, I do like the uh, uh, Gregory, this is the Black Diamond product. So again, any questions, let me know, and thank you very much. Go out, have a good time, come back alive. That's always a, a top priority of mine. It's no fun to hear body bag stories, especially when it's uh, uh, something about equipment or lack of judgment. Be safe.